Okay, who wants to talk about cordless rear handle saws? I do. <laughs> Actually, it took a while to round up. I had to borrow some saws from some people. But tell me you have a problem having too many saws without telling me that you have a problem owning too many saws. First of all, this video is sponsored by Tool Barn. So you're going to find all the links in the description below. Okay, so let's go through this. This is every rear handle cordless saw that is currently on the market with one notable exception. I do not have with me the seven and a quarter inch skill saw. This is a 10 and a quarter. I don't have the seven and a quarter. It's basically the same saw, just a smaller upper and lower guard and a smaller blade. This thing is a beast. I probably hurt myself. Okay, so background. Why do we use rear handle saws? Namely, that's a saw with a handle on the rear. Here on the west coast, I think primarily west of the Mississippi, we've always just used skill saw, a worm drive saw. Blade is on the left. Most of us are right-handed users. We want to be able to see the blade and we want to be able to push the saw. We don't want to have our wrist at the top and none of this stuff looking at the blade on the other side. It's just the way that, that we've done it. That's the way we prefer it here on the west. So let's go through this. Most of you probably used a skill saw in the past if you use this style. That was a worm drive saw that weighed about 15 pounds. <laughs> I remember when we finally got a mag back in the mid 90s, like the mag 77, and it was a pound lighter. We loved it. And then I think I reviewed for JLC back in 2014, there was like a mag 77 LT that was primarily designed as women came into the trades and it was still lighter yet. That was my favorite saw. I loved it. Right up until Makita released this 36 volt saw, back in, I think, 2017, we immediately got one for review and promptly bought another. That has been our favorite saw ever since. By the way, you can read the review of almost all of these saws in the link below in the Journal of Light Construction. Since that was posted two years ago, the Metabo HPT just came out, and of course the Makita XGT, which is kind of their new platform for bigger tools and more power. Okay, so let me just do a very quick breakdown. You can read all the specs online. I don't want to waste your time. Milwaukee with a 12 amp hour battery, saw hook. All of these saws have blade breaks and they all bevel to about 53 degrees, 5'3", 53 degrees. So there it is. Onboard blade wrench, yeah, just all the standard stuff. Here is the DeWalt, same thing, rafter hook. I really like the bevel gauge on the DeWalt's, always have. Then here's the new XGT, right? So you see a theme? Some of the hooks will go over a two and a half inch eye joist, some don't. Again, you can read the specs online. The green Metabo, hook on the top. Truthfully, I prefer the hook on the side. It can be a little awkward putting it on top. Who cares? I'm just glad it's got a hook. And of course, the Makita 36 volt, same thing. This is my favorite placement. You can actually hang this on a three and a half inch beam. Not that great. Two and a half, it works really well. And then last but not least is the Hilti. Plastic hook, seems a little cheap. Pretty lightweight saw. Again, bevels to 53 degrees. And just for giggles, the Makita XGT 10 and a quarter inch beam cutting saw. I love this thing. And if you're currently taking the anabolics, <laughs> this bad boy, oh man, what a ridiculous saw. Look at the size of this battery. There's the hook. Okay, let me go in order. Here are the weights. The skill saw is 18.6 pounds. Yeah, 18.6 pounds. This guy here, 14.2. So it's even lighter than the skill saws that we used to use. 14.2, the Milwaukee, 12.4 pounds, no, 13.4. The Milwaukee is 13.4 pounds. The DeWalt is 13.8. The XGT, 11.8. The Metabo, 10.6. Yeah, it feels like you're picking it up without a battery, but there's a battery in it. The Makita that I absolutely love and have used for the last four years, Where's it at on my list? 
12.4 pounds. So pretty lightweight. This is why I picked it in the review. It adds up. When you're picking up a saw and making repetitive cuts, save the weight. And the Hilti comes in at 12 pounds. Okay, this is just what the saws look like. I'm gonna go ahead and make a few cuts with those. I'm gonna put on the point of view footage because there's a couple of things that I wanna point out. First off, the fact that these are all cordless, man. Honestly, I will take any of these saws, with the exception of this guy, that skill's just too heavy. I'll take any of these saws because they don't have cords, even though there's some minor annoyances. So I'm gonna set all these down, let's make some cuts, and then I'll explain to you really what my current favorite saw is and why. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to make a couple of cuts with each saw set at 53 degrees, 5-3, and that's a 45. So notice the sight line, and this saw is incredibly powerful. What I don't like about this saw is that the handle is a little too close, so the balance can be a little wonky, but the sight line's pretty good, and it has so much power that even a compound miter like this, no problem at all. I think I misstated it, 45 and 45. So, good sight line. The bevel gauge is, I don't know, who cares? I, I really don't care. You can see it's got the little tick marks, there's no stop. I don't care, personally. Plenty of power. As you can tell, the saws really aren't getting bogged down. Oh, let's do the Hilti. So here's the bevel gauge, no stops, I don't care, 45 degrees. This one's a little smaller sight line. I would prefer it to be bigger personally, but it does have a light. I don't know that you can see it in the daylight but it does have a light. And we found it in like early morning or in the winter time inside. That was actually pretty helpful. Let's go one more. Yeah, I know, they're not that parallel. I know, I know. Okay, so this annoys the daylights out of us. Notice how the zero is uphill of the tick mark. Everybody who, so if I want to go to 45, then I have to go 45, that tick mark. Everybody that's tried this saw has been five degrees off the first time they used it. So a little slower, I have to let off just a little bit. Now, here's what I want you to notice, very small sight line. I don't like that in comparison, but this has been my saw of choice for the last four years, so it doesn't really matter, but just so you can make an informed decision. Again, plenty of power. Okay, so here's the XGT. Bevel gauge, same thing, it's uphill. I'm used to it, doesn't matter to me anymore. I do like this plug.
I can definitely push it a little better, a little harder than that 36 volt. But notice, very small sight line. Again, who cares? Dust port. Nice, strong saw. So stronger than the 36 volt and lighter. Okay, pretty amazing. Take this battery out. So I have a two and a half amp hour, which it, trust me, it is noticeable. <laughs> it's pretty weak. Put this back into the big, the big saw. And last but not least is the Metabo 36 volt saw, the lightest saw in this batch. Set it to 45. I like that bevel gauge, easy to see, very tactile. A little slower. But did you notice right off the bat, look how big that sight line is. Oh, I love, I really love this saw. Oh, let's just do it. Okay, so I can push it pretty hard. That's a two by 10 Doug fir. No problem. I mean, my goodness. What, are we really gonna complain about that? And just for giggles, let's go ahead and use these other two saws. These are both 10 and a quarter inch saws. Saw stop there. Nice big 10 inch blade. What a thing of beauty. I'm just going for it. Okay, so there's the, um, what are we calling this? What was I calling this? Whatever, but there's the view. <laughs> My brain, I should have probably eaten lunch. Same thing, this bad boy is all ready for dust collection. It's even got a Bluetooth connection. Sold separate, of course. Pretty amazing. A cordless 10 and a quarter inch saw. All of these saws, by the way, have Diablo blades. That is my blade of choice. Now, let's do this guy. It's your classic skill. So, worm drive saw, tons of power, fast. But look at the size of this thing. Crikey. So, notice right off the bat, I really can't see past this. So, what I'm actually doing is just trying to make the table parallel to that other line. Is it a deal breaker? No. Honestly, tall guys, you could probably see it better. There it is. Okay. There it is. Kind of warm. Okay, now that you've seen some cuts, Again, this was just, it's a high level view of the saws. Basically, this is what they look like when they're cutting compound miters for jacks. And here's the weight. Now, what's my personal opinion? Well, let me say this. I don't know that it's possible to declare any one tool the best. It's so subjective. My preferences are completely different than me. I grew up on the West Coast. This is where I learned to cut. East Coast guys, you have a different set of, um, of viewpoints and priorities. So I really can't tell you what you should go out and buy. All I can do is explain what I would choose and why I would choose it and hopefully keep it simple enough that, that when you watch this review, you're like, this is just a waste of my time. I hope. So what saw would I pick if I was going to go buy a saw right after turning these cameras off? Can you guess which one do you think it is? It should have been obvious. <laughs> it's the Metabo HVT. I just, I have to say, picking up this saw and using it, it's 10.6 pounds. That is, that is, I can't even, words clearly fail me. I love this saw. Like, I really like this saw. It's so light. I'm 44. The weight of my tools will play a direct role into how much longer I get to do what it is that I love to do. So I'm gonna pick it based on weight alone. 
I really like the sight line. Metabo batteries are not super expensive. So Kyle and I, we've been working together for 17 years. Is it 17? Goodness. Yeah, February of 2005. Kid was like just 20 years old. <laughs> Man, we're old now. Anyway, digress. I think I want three of these total. That way, if somebody's cutting rafters, they can have one saw and a bevel. We're cutting rake wall studs. One saw and a bevel, one saw square, and then we still have one out for the second guy to use, and they're super lightweight. So I recommend the Metabo HPT. That's what I would buy. Now here's a caveat to that. Metabo HPT doesn't really have this whole ecosystem of tools that I use. They have a great recip saw that's cordless. I love the plunge router that's cordless and the triple hammer. Beyond that, I don't have any other Metabo HPT tools, so you'd have to do the research if that was an ecosystem you wanted to get into, okay? Now, maybe you don't wanna just have a, like one Metabo tool and everything else to Walt or Milwaukee or Makita. Totally understand. If it's not this saw, then I would recommend the Makita XGT. This saw is only 11.8 pounds. It's more powerful. There's everything to love about this saw. There's no negatives. I'm really just picking this mostly because it's lighter and I really like the sight line. You'd be, you'd be so happy with either of these saws. The advantage of this XGT is that Makita is building out this whole XGT lineup with more powerful tools and that might, uh, might appeal to you. Maybe you need a lot of bigger tools, you know, bigger uh, roto hammers, that kind of thing. Plus, if you have this, then it will share batteries with the 10 and a quarter inch XGT beam saw. This is an amazing saw. It's not the most powerful. It does get bogged down. I couldn't care less. I don't have to roll out a cord. I don't have to roll out a thick gauge cord. I love this saw. So for us, we want two of the 10 and a quarter inch and three of the Metabos. So there's us. Any major nitpicks about this saw? Nope. It's a good saw. These big 12 amp hour batteries, they make the saw just a little heavier. They last a long time. Milwaukee, in my experience, is a great platform. DeWalt, I'm not a fan. It, it rips the best. So we have one of these that's dedicated to ripping form panels and, oh, I don't know, like stair treads. It, it has a ripping guide on it and that's what it's dedicated to. We use it for nothing else. The Hilti, I can't justify the cost. So, and the Makita 36 volt, great saw. Find it on sale with batteries thrown in. You're not gonna have any regrets. That saw is four years old, still going great. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. I hope I didn't waste your time. I really love framing. It is such a pleasure to be able to get to use a new tool like this. So I hope you guys, I hope you enjoy what you do. The right tool definitely helps. All right, it is time for me to get out of here. Thank you for following along. I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Even if you think this is the dumbest video you've ever seen, it never hurts to be a nice person. Just try it, just try it. Give me a thumbs up. Okay, if there's any questions or feedback, put it below, I will try to respond to that. Thank you everybody, stay safe.